This video covers the analog to digital converter in the microcontroller. We're going to talk about analog to digital converters in general. We will discuss some parameters of analog to digital converters. We'll discuss how this converter works in our microcontroller and then how we program our microcontroller to use it. And that involves using a few registers, ADMUX, ADC-SRA, and ADC-HNL. And then the video ends with an example program. So what is an ADC, or what is analog ADC? ADC is a way to allow the microcontroller to sense the outside world. If we want to measure some physical parameter, then we'll have a transducer that converts one form of energy to another, usually to an electrical voltage. And so we have this voltage that is a continuously varying value. But our program in the microcontroller executes logical decisions based on numbers. And so we, we need to convert that analog voltage into some digital number that the program can use. And there are a couple of main characteristics when we talk about different analog to digital converters. Those are the precision of the conversion and then the speed. The precision refers to the step size. The analog to digital converter views an analog voltage in terms of steps. That is, how many steps are there from ground to the voltage that is being read, or Vn? And there are two factors in the analog to digital converter that determine the step size. First is called the, is the reference voltage, called Vref. This is the voltage against which all input voltages are compared. So for our microcontroller, the highest VREF value we can have is five volts. And the second factor is the number of bits in the analog to digital conversion. Because like I said, we're going from an analog voltage to a number, an integer number. And so that the size of that number is determined by the number of bits that we have set aside for it. So for example, if we had four bits, then we could get numbers from zero to 15. So those two factors determine the step size according to this equation. So delta V is what I'm referring to as the step size. And that is given by the quotient V ref over two to the N. So our reference voltage divided by two raised to the power of the number of bits in the conversion. For example, if we have a four, four bit analog to digital converter with V ref equals five volts. Well, then the step size is just five over 16, which is 0.3125 volts. Now the microcontroller that we have contains specific hardware for analog to digital conversion. And here's the diagram showing that hardware. I want to point out a few specific components, the multiplexer, the sample and hold comparator, and then the conversion logic. So the multiplexer allows us to have many analog to digital uh, analog inputs to the microcontroller. And then the multiplexer allows us to choose one of those inputs to be converted into a digital number. So we can have many outputs, but we can only perform a conversion um, one of these at a time. So that's the multiplexer. And the input pins to the microcontroller, ADC0, ADC1, is how they're referred to. These are all the different analog inputs we can have. And secondly, we have the sample and hold comparator. The reason we need the sample and hold comparator is that the conversion process used in the our microcontroller is called successive approximations and it takes anywhere from 13 to 25 clock cycles and that's clock cycles 
for the analog to digital converter, um, which is different from the machine clock. But anyway, more on that later. So the point is that this takes a finite amount of time, the conversion. And so we have a sample and hold in order to sample the voltage and then hold it while we're doing this successive approximation procedure so that the voltage that we're comparing, that we're converting, isn't changing during the conversion. So we sort of take a snapshot of the voltage and, and then we compare that voltage to our successive approximations. And we'll look at the conversion logic in the next slide. So the idea is to come up with an approximation by first adding the most significant bit to one. So here's an example where we have VREF is five volts and we have a four bit analog to digital converter. And VN in this case is 3.5 volts. So this is the voltage that we wanna to convert to a number. All right, so the first step is to set the most significant bit to one and this, the horizontal axis here shows the iterations. So the first iteration, we're starting with the most significant bit, which is the leftmost bit, bit three. So one, zero, zero, zero is our first guess for our digital value. And then referring back to the block diagram, that conversion logic will give the number to a 10 bit digital, well, for our microcontroller it's 10 bits. For this example in the next slide, it's four bits. But anyway, it gives the number to a digital to analog converter. And that converts that number into a voltage. And then our comparator is going to compare the VN value that we sampled and we're holding to the output of this digital to analog converter. So for this example, our comparator is comparing 3.5 volts with 2.5 volts. And if VN is higher than VDAC, then that bit remains a one. If VN is lower than this estimate, then that bit is cleared. And so after that process, we go to the next iteration and we'll set the next most significant bit to one and then repeat this. So then our new estimate will go to the digital to analog converter. That voltage will be sent to the comparator and then the comparator will check to see which is high, if VN is higher than VDAC or not. So here's how it looks for our Example, five volt VREF, four bit DAC, I'm sorry, ADC, four bit ADC, that is analog to digital converter, and VN is 3.5 volts. For the first iteration, our guess is one zero zero zero, and that value is sent to the digital to analog converter, which yields 2.5 volts. Then this 2.5 volts is compared to 3.5 volts, and since VN is higher than VDAC, that bit remains one. We go to the next iteration and set the next most significant bit to one. So now we have one, one, zero, zero as our estimate. That value is sent to the digital to analog converter. The resulting voltage is 3.75 volts. And that voltage goes to the comparator. So in this case, VN is not greater than 3.75. So our VN is not greater than our estimate. So that bit is cleared, and then we go to the next most significant bit. So now we have 1010 as our estimate. That goes to the digital to analog converter. We get this voltage that's compared to VN. And since VN is greater than this, that bit remains set. And we go to the least most, the least significant bit. So now our estimate is 1011, and we'll do one more comparison, a final comparison. Since VN is greater than our estimate, that bit remains set. And this is our resulting number. So for a five volt VREF with a four bit ADC, if VN is 3.5, then the resulting digital value is 11 in decimal or 1011 in binary. So our analog to digital converter in this case went from 3.5 volts to the number 11. Here are equations to 
calculate what the result would be instead of having to go through that successive approximation on your own. You could just use an equation. So we would say that the result of the conversion would just be Vn divided by the step size. So this would tell us how many steps it takes. And that's the meaning of the digital number. It's how many steps it takes to go from ground up to Vn. But this value needs to be an integer. So for example, if we had Vn was three and, and or, I'm sorry, Vn was 3.2 and delta V was one volt, then we would get a number for DADC which is 3.2. But DADC has to be an integer. So we could apply the floor function, which just takes the input and returns the integer that's below that. So the closest integer that's not greater than this function. But the highest possible result from our analog to digital conversion is 2 to the n minus 1. So for example, in the previous example, we had a four bit analog to digital converter. Well, 1111 is 15 in decimal. So that would be the highest value we could have. So we would apply, and now here's an equation for the resulting. number from the conversion. So D ADC is the minimum of 2 to the n minus 1 and floor of Vn over step size, where the step size again is whoops, V ref over 2 to the n. So if you wanted to figure out what value the analog to digital converter would yield given V ref number of bits and Vn, then you can use this equation here. Now we'll go the other direction. Application on the microcontroller, the reason it's using the a ADC is to measure Vn. So after we after the conversion is complete, we'll have some digital number, for example, 14. But it could be that we want to perform logic based on a voltage, not based on that number. And so here are equations to convert from the result of conversion to a voltage. So referring to this figure, we see that the voltage Vn is going to be somewhere between the steps. So it could be anywhere in here and we don't exactly know. And that's the problem with the, that's the quantization error that comes from just giving discrete values for a, for a continuous value. So our result is bracketed between, our actual voltage is bracketed between two steps. So Vn is greater than or equal to delta V times DADC. So the, the number times the step size, but Vn is less than or equal to step size times the number plus one. So we could say that Vn is approximately equal to the step size times the number, the resulting number from analog to digital conversion. So that covered ADC in general, why it's necessary. We talked about how ADC works in our microcontroller. So now we're going to talk about how to program a microcontroller to employ the analog to digital converter. There are, we're going to look at four registers. The first one is ADMUX, ADMUX. And so what we set in ADMUX register is, first of all, we choose VREF. There are four possibilities for VREF, well, really three possibilities. The first is to connect some voltage to the AREF pin on the microcontroller. And then whatever that voltage is, is going to be our reference voltage. An option is to use VCC as VREF. So the power going to the analog to digital converter 
unit. So AVCC, the voltage that's powering the analog to digital converter, that could be used for AREF. So in that case, we do a little bit of special wiring that we'll talk about in the next slide. And then the third choice is there's an internal 1.1 voltage reference that we could use for VREF. And so these, you know, our choice of VREF determines what these two bits are. And then we choose where VN comes from. So we can use ADC0, ADC1, 2, 3, 4. And whichever source we want to have for VN, that determines these four bits, MUX30, 3, 2, 1, 0. So this is for the multiplexer, which source we're going to use. And then we can refer to the AdMux register to see what value it needs to have, depending on our choice for VREF and VN. So here are the two bits for VREF, and here are the four bits for the VN source. And then bits four and five, we'll just leave those zero. So here we see an external capacitor, and this is what that's referring to. So if we're going to use either ABCC or an internal 1.1 volt for VREF, then we need to connect this pin, ABREF, to ground by using uh, with a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And that will improve our conversion accuracy. And another way to improve the conversion accuracy is to power the analog to digital converter by connecting it to VCC using an LC network. So we have an inductor here, 10 micro Henry inductor, and a 100 nanofarad capacitor. So that's used to power the analog to digital converter. So these are two connections that are necessary in order to get the best results or improved results from the analog to digital converter. Now our other register for setting up the converter, we have make, we have to make a choice about the conversion time. So the anal, the ADC can run at different speeds, and those speeds can vary between 50 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. And so we have these values, and the ADC uses a clock and its clock is a prescaled value of the machine clock. So we could either divide the machine clock by two, divide it by four, divide it by 64, divide the machine clock by 128. We can get the most accurate results by using the largest prescaler. So that is having the slowest conversion. And so for our applications, if we want the most accurate conversion but sacrifice speed, then we will use 111 for the the analog prescaler bits. Those three bits are here in the ADC SRA register. And then in order to turn on the analog to digital converter, that is enable it, we have to write a one to the ADEN bit of this register. And then once we are ready, once we have our VREF and input source chosen and our prescaler chosen and the analog to digital converters turned on, then we can start a conversion by writing a one to the ADSC bit. And like I said before, this takes several clock cycles and once it's done, we can be notified of that or we can know that it's done in one of two ways. We can either pull the ADIF bit, so that is just sit there in a loop waiting for this bit or we don't have to necessarily sit there and lose. But anyway, just keep checking this bit. And once it's one, that means the conversion is done and we're ready to read our number, the number that resulted from the conversion. Or we could use interrupts. So we can enable interrupts with the ADIE bit, analog to digital interrupt enable bit. And in that case, if we're if we've enabled that and we've enabled interrupts globally, then we would use our digital number, the result of the conversion in the interrupt service routine. So again, we've got to set the prescaler. These are all things that are done in the ADC SRA register. So before we 
use the analog to digital converter. We need to set this register three bits from the prescaler. We need to turn on the ADC with the ADEN bit. We start conversions with this bit, and then we can know when the conversion is done in two ways. But when the conversion is done, we want to get our number. But as you, as I mentioned briefly earlier, the analog to digital converter for our microcontroller is a 10-bit analog to digital converter. So it's a pretty high resolution. And one result of using 10 bits is that the resulting number doesn't fit in one register. So the the 10 bits from the analog to digital conversion are distributed over two registers, and they're shown in this picture. So we've got these two registers called ADCH and ADCL for our analog to digital conversion high and ADC low. So the two most significant bits from the conversion are in ADCH, and then the other eight bits are in ADCL. Whenever we read our values into the program, we have to access these two registers in a certain order. We have to first read ADCL and then read ADCH. That's because whenever we read ADCL, then these registers are locked and they can't be written to anymore until we read ADCH. So if we read it in the other order, if we read ADCH and then ADCL, it could be that we'd get ADCH from one conversion and then ADCL would be written to again before we read it from another conversion. So we would get a mixed up result. So read ADCL first and then ADCH. And here's an example. And in this example, we want to perform an analog to digital conversion on ADC0. And then we're going to send those 10 bits to ports D and port and B. So ports D and B need to be output. So that's what these two lines do. Port A needs to be an input. And then we write to the ADC SRA register. So here's the ADN, ADEN bit to enable the ADC, and then here's the prescaler bits. So we're going to have the highest possible prescaler, which is the slowest conversion speed, but the most accurate results. And then we'll set admux. So we're going to choose VREF and the ADC input number. Then we come into our loop and we will start com the conversion by writing a one to the ADSC bit of this register. And in this example, we're going to just wait until the analog to digital interrupt flag is set. So we're just polling this bit. So that's all this does. We just sit here until the conversion is complete. And once it's complete, then that flag will get set. And then we assign the value from ADCL to port D and the values from ADCH to port B. So again, here are the four things we need to look at, or the four registers. We've got the, the status register for the ADC, and we've got the multiplex register. And then we start conversion, and then we monitor the whether the conversion is finished and then finally, take the data from ADCL and ADCH. Just a couple of questions to consider. How do you get one number from ADCL and ADCH? So 10 bits can give you numbers from 0 to 1023, but 8 bits can only give you numbers from 0 to 255. So how do we combine the two bits from ADCH with the eight bits in ADCL in order to get the resulting number, the resulting integer number that ranges from zero to 1023. 
Well, you can declare a variable VN. This is a 16-bit integer. So it goes from 0 to 65,300 something. So VN is our variable. And we assign the value ADCL to VN. So now VN is somewhere between 0 and 255 because it's got the 8 bits from ADCL. And then to that value, we add the value of ADCH left shifted 8 bits. So now we've got 10 bits from our analog to digital conversion in our variable VN. Okay, next question. What is the result when VN is equal to VREF? The result is hex 3FF for a 10 bit microcontroller. That is, it's all ones. And that's not surprising. So that means that our estimate for VN, we don't really know where it is just looking at that digital number. It's somewhere between VREF and VREF minus the step size. So the next question, other than setting conversion speed, so that's the prescaler, what has to be done prior to using to the AD analog to digital conversion? So we've got three things. We've got to enable the ADC unit, so turn on the analog to digital converter, writing one to the ADEN bit, then set the ADC input number, so that is which input to the multiplexer we're going to use for our conversion, and that's in the ADMUX register, and then set our VREF value. So what's our VREF source? Is it going to be the AREF pin? Is it going to be ABCC, or is it going to be the internal 1.1 volts? Well, those things need to be done also. And then finally, the last question, which we just looked at. So how to trigger conversion and tell when it's done? Do you know? Trigger conversion by writing a 1 to the ADSC bit. And that is in the ADCSRA register. And then tell when it's done, we could either pull the ADIF bit or enable an interrupt from the analog to digital converter. And that's all for this video. Hopefully you've learned why analog to digital conversion is necessary, how the method of successive approximation works for analog to digital conversion, a couple of hardware considerations for when wiring the analog to digital converter with our microcontroller, and then how to set up a program to use the analog to digital converter.